Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I'm George. We're all George. It's looking like a really good day, guys. Really good day. And I have something very big to share with you guys. FOMO. Bitcoin FOMO is real. And we have one of the biggest banks out there that is FOMOing in hard. That's Goldman Sachs. So let's talk about what's going on with FOMO, with Bitcoin, with crypto. A lot of updates today. A lot of greens today. And we're all feeling pretty good. So let's get started. Smash the like. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me three times a day. Hit that notification bell. Also, follow my social media channels. And check out all the latest news, articles, and guides at CryptoZerus.com. Welcome, 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 welcome. Throw a fourth welcome in there. Oops. A little premature for that. Um, yeah, things are looking good. Things are looking good, guys. Last night, this morning, I was telling you guys, Bitcoin is on its way up to probably 44.5, right? We held at this 42.7. I said that was very encouraging. We needed to hold there, turn that resistance into a support. Next up is this 44.5. And this will be an important test. Very important test for Bitcoin. Someone's saying I'm echoing. Am I echoing? I don't, I don't have anything else going on here. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I was saying, this is an important test because Bitcoin has not been able to break above and hold above 44.5 since, since the beginning of the year when we fell down January 6th. Wow, it's been almost four months now. Four months but if we could break through and we keep going, well, like I've been saying, 50K will be right around the corner. And we are inching slowly but surely that 44.5 looking very promising. And that is just that's just because Bitcoin is the answer for all this FUD and uncertainty and all the things that we're facing today. And it's decoupling, starting to decouple more and more away from the U.S. markets. And you can see everything, almost everything, almost everything, not completely. Almost everything is in the green today. Today is a very, very, very good day. If you let, let's scroll, let me update. We're very close to that two trillion market cap once again. Although depending on where you look, I think on CoinGecko, we're already above two trillion. But on CMC, we're a little bit below, right? And oh, this has not updated. No, wait, hold on. This is still a thousand points off. There you go. Okay. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but CMC, you got to love them. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have to love them. But uh, you can see, yeah, a lot of good movers. Solana, I talked about, I got a little more news about Solana starting to move. Dogecoin, Cardano, people are asking about why Terra has not moved. Just give it a chance. Once it does, it'll be easily above a, a hundred. Um, and many others, Polygon. All the favorites are coming up full swing. Very, very, very good day. And by the way, I just want to start out with some media FUD just to show you guys what media does. So someone on Twitter posted this and I'm glad they did. Look at March 10th, only like a few weeks ago and then March 18th and yesterday. Just a few weeks ago, interest in NFTs and metaverse is falling fast. Then it turns the metaverse is growing up. And that in turns into a how to buy land and real estate metaverse. <laughs> so very negative to very pro. So pro that they're willing to teach you how to do it. But here's the thing. Look at the views. Look at the views. 111,000 for the very negative. 1,200 for neutral. And almost nothing when it comes to teaching you. <laughs> so... Uh, this is the reason why most media stories are very negative because negativity draws in the views and clicks. And that's why throughout the last two months, we had so much FUD everywhere, right? Because FUD draws in the clicks, but it was not nearly as bad as it seemed, right? Bitcoin above 40,000 is not the same as Bitcoin at 4,000. 
but it it the sentiment was almost the same. You 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 almost couldn't tell that Bitcoin was was ten times higher than the same point two years ago, right? Wild, wild stuff. Anyways, uh, we know. Let's talk about banks and banks and FOMOing, FOMOing hard right now. We know that Goldman Sachs just three days ago completed their very first OTC trade, uh, options trade, with the help of Galaxy Digital. Seemed like, okay, they're, they're finally getting started, right? But no, right after that, they announced they will be the very first American bank to offer OTC crypto trading. So it's like they're just jumping in. They're not even dipping their toes. They make their first trade and then immediately... Now they offer OTC trading. And then now, this caught me by surprise. You go to goldmansachs.com. Go to their front page. What is the very first thing that you see? From cryptocurrencies to the metaverse, explore the mega trends that are reshaping economies. This is smack middle front page of Goldman Sachs. You couldn't even tell they're a bank by looking at this. You think they're a crypto company, right? <laughs> And you go down and then, okay, finally you start realizing, okay, it is a bank. But very first thing you see and you click into it, wow, it's like everything, everything about the metaverse, about Web 3.0, what is it, online gaming, understanding things and all this digital tipping point, unicorns and everything there is about crypto, blockchain. Decentralized web, Bitcoin, of course, right? They're hundred percent in. So obviously, Goldman Sachs is fomoing hard right now because they realize you can't stop. You can't stop this. Okay, this is not gonna go away, and it's better for them to be first than last, right? And we know, we know J.P. Morgan. They go probably fomoing hard too. Bank of America, everyone else will be following suit. So Goldman Sachs going 100% in. And that's going to be good. That's going to be good. From the perspective of they're going to attract billions upon billions of dollars into the space. They're probably going to be offering services to their clients, especially their wealthy clients, right? So overall, this will bring in a whole lot of attention a whole lot of money into the space and many others are go follow suit. So want to lead with that pretty amazing stuff. And of course, and of course, uh, because of the growing ecosystem, right? You could look at Ethereum, Bitcoin. They're among the biggest companies in the world. If they were companies, I know they're not. But because of all the adoption, of course, the buying and the growth, right? I decided to bring up uh, the market cap of all the companies and all the commodities, including, you know, the precious metals, right? You, you see right now, Bitcoin is at number nine and uh, they will be coming up. At one point in time, they surpassed the market cap of silver. And as Bitcoin climbs back to a 60,000 it will and it's on its way to becoming number one surpassing gold in the near future but if you look at someone like ethereum which is driving the web 3.0 initiative right now they're already bigger than most of the banks out there including bank of america and mastercard right and bigger than goldman sachs and everyone else the only one they're not bigger than is jp morgan but they're not too far off And that will happen soon, too. So, of course, someone like Goldman wants to FOMO in because look at how big Ethereum is already. And look at how big, of course, Bitcoin is. You definitely don't want to miss this growing asset class, right? And then uh, here's just some metrics to throw out there. Within one year, about $4.9 trillion worth of Bitcoin uh, has been transacted and total transaction count about 93 million. That's just within one year. And this will only grow as time goes on. Certainly very, very, very exciting. 
Very exciting indeed. All right. That's what I want to lead off with. Now, there are a lot of crypto news out there. You know, there's specific projects. There's just a lot of good movers right now. You could say that almost everything is just going up at this point. But there are a few that are standing out. So I decided to pick up a few of them. For example, Solana. Why is Solana going up? Well, it does seem like there's more games that's about to come aboard. Crafton, PUBG developer, teams up with Solana Labs to launch play-to-earn crypto games. And they are a South Korean gaming um, yeah, conglomerate. And, uh, and basically, what does this mean? It means good stuff. Good stuff for Solana, right? Solana, obviously, they have a huge NFT ecosystem. Not so much games, although there are some, like Star Atlas, which is very hyped up. But you're about to see a lot more games enter into Solana, which, of course, is very good. And just to throw some metrics out there, as for the network, you know what? Something I didn't know, 75%, 75.4% of all Sol is staked right now. That's a very high percentage. Right, you combine that with a DeFi like Serum and um, well, what's the other Radium and several others, and now you got games, right? Yeah, there's a lot of Solana stake, and right now they're processing at 3,000 transactions per second. Ethereum wishes they could process 3,000 transactions per second, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, that's a lot of news. Uh, Polygon is coming up. A lot of people still recognize Polygon is still a big powerhouse, right? When it comes to ETH, ETH scaling, gaming, NFTs, a lot of stuff going on. And the most popular game within NFT or within Polygon's ecosystem is Pegasus, where you get to race horses, and a whole bunch of people are playing that. But besides that, there are many other games that are definitely driving Polygon right now. Pegasus is by far the biggest, but some of the other ones, Comet, Reality Cards, right? So they're growing. And if you look at, you know, just some kind of statistics for Polygon, still very, very good. 2.85 million transactions per day. New contracts, 12, no, 11,000 contracts. That's within a week. First time contract creator, 2,000. I mean, so. There's a lot of stuff going on with Polygon as well. Very good. Positive stuff. Positive stuff. I did notice that Engine also is having a good day up about 9 or 10% today because Engine just launched their new wallet, their new wallet, which allows you to trade DeFi. There's staking rewards that's built within. It's also Polkadot and Kuzama ready because... Because of the new Infinity Chain that has launched on Polkadot. And they plan on going all out with NFTs. So overall, this is a nice new wallet. They've always had a good universal wallet. Seems like it's gotten better. And plus, I'm very excited about what's to come with Infinity. So Engine also has some good stuff. I did see Axie Infinity also up huge today. I think this had something to do with it. Binance adds Axie Infinity to auto invest, announces two new promotions, and they're actually pretty damn good. I mean, it's a hundred percent. They're offering a hundred percent staking rewards right now with with Axie. That's that's a lot. Why would you not? <laughs> and a hundred percent trading fees, cash back, right? So Binance and Axie, short short endorsement. But of course, Axie have also been very decimated recently. They changed their model with SLP, their secondary token. So overall, things are starting to come back for Axie as well. So that's good. And uh, and I already talked about this. Cardano is doing very well because Coinbase added Cardano staking. For people that don't want to put it into a Cardano pool, you could do it right from Coinbase. And also other things, a new fund created and stuff like that. So... Good for Cardano. And Cardano also has a huge number above 71% of all ADA is, is staked right now. And plus, you know, now you got others, you know, others that are staking now with Coinbase. So that probably drive it a little bit higher. Uh, you have Doge. Doge just rose significantly because uh, I had to reread this. I did a double take. I thought this said uh, Bank of America, but no, Bitcoin of America, which is... Uh, 
uh, a large crypto ATM provider. They have decided to add Doge. And uh, how big are they? I think I saw they were like, yeah, 1,800 kiosks or ATMs around the country. And now you'll be able to buy Doge on top of them. And this caused Doge to pump up. So I guess that's good. Uh, Kadena, I did see this. Kadena retweeted this. Cadex, which is the biggest DEX on Kadena, is now 100% ready for launch. So I'm looking forward to this. When this comes out, this will be a big thing for Kadena. Not only is it a really good DEX, but also it's going to allow them to start locking liquidity on top of Kadena. So this is also very positive news, although Kadena has not moved up as much as before, but I think when this comes out, it definitely will. And lastly, DeFi Kingdoms has been skyrocketing recently as well, and that's because they're about to launch this new crystal ball within Avalanche, right? So everyone is really looking forward to this. A lot of excitement is building. Last night, I decided to check my pool. Um... You know, I have I have a significant amount of UST and Jewel staked in. I'm, it looks pretty darn good. It looks really good. I mean, I can't take all of it out, but uh, within a short amount of time, I think my Jewel rewards is up to $22,000 already. I mean, that's amazing. Even with Jewel coming down from its highs, I think I'm still up. So, um, but there is a lot more coming to DeFi Kingdoms, so... Watch out, and this will not only help DeFi Kingdom's Jewel, it's going to help Harmony, which is why Harmony is going up. And this will help Avalanche, too. Avalanche has a lot of stuff going on, but I do think this will also help Avalanche in the future. So, a lot of, a lot of exciting stuff. A lot of exciting stuff, and we are above 44,000 once again. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Um... Yeah, that, that's pretty much what I had to say. So, I'm going to ring my morning bell. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> and now let's do some Q&A. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I missed anything. I still don't get the metaverse. Just think about it. Think about it as a game. All right. That's the best way to think about it. You understand what games look like, right? There's metaverses within games. Just think about the metaverse being a big giant game that brands can offer services and sell, um, you know, or showcase marketing material to users that are in the metaverse. It's really that simple. Jerry, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Elon interview. What Elon interview? I hope you're not falling for a, a scam interview. How can we fight back market manipulation? Personally, I think leverage and ODC should be banned and considered legal. I, I think many agree with that. But many will say no. You know, that's the whole point of crypto. You don't want to make centralized decisions for everyone, right? You want to allow as many options as you can. So OTC it has been around forever. It's not, there's nothing illegal about that. And, and I don't think, I don't agree OTC should be banned. I think leverage should be banned because I think exchanges take advantage of leverage, right? Offer it without proper education and so many people use it and get wrecked. So I agree with that. But there are some traders, day traders especially, they use leverage because if it wasn't for leverage, then they wouldn't make a lot of gains. So uh, as for fighting manipulation, just realize that uh, you don't have to fight it. You just have to take advantage of it. Okay, if there's market manipulation, there, there, and there will always be, right? But while everyone else is panicking, you do the opposite. You don't panic. You make sure you're prepared, which is why having that cash on the side 
helps with that. And you continue to DCA or buy the dips while everyone else is scared. So you can't stop manipulation, but you can certainly use it and take advantage of it. Because that's what the whales do. I mean, they, they basically just do the opposite. Uh, rumors about, yeah, the, the Luna Foundation purchased another $125 million of BTC on spot market. Think about it. They still have like $1.75 billion that they can use to keep buying. And they're not buying OTC. That's what I love to see. As much as we love Michael Saylor and others that have been buying, they're buying OTC. Not really affecting the spot market, right? And unfortunately, when they buy OTC and whales sell on spot, that's why we see all this manipulation, right? I'm glad to see Luna. I'm glad to see Do Kwan. They're buying on Binance because that's what we want. We're going to drive. We're going to drive those shorters out, right? And we're going to drive the price up and cause a lot of short squeezes. So, man, if they keep going and buying and buying and buying spot, we'll be back. Back to 60000 in no time. Who's talking smack about soccer moms? <laughs> or soccer dads? There's a lot of soccer dads these days. Um, what did I miss here? I'm starting to catch up. I like Phantom. I like Phantom a lot. Coinbase is allowing your paychecks to direct deposit cash on the side. Yeah, when I say cash on the side, it doesn't actually necessarily mean it has to be cash, cash, right? Um, but uh, you could use, let's say, stable coins, right? Let's say you're taking profits. Um, you know, you could keep a little bit in stable coins and use that as your reserves, which I call cash on the side, so that you're able to take advantage, right? So I think that's important. Or otherwise, you just want to continue to DCA. You could DCA according to schedule, set a schedule for yourself. Then uh, every time you get paid, let's say, you get a paycheck, you put a little bit of that into, uh, into whatever you want to buy, right? It, it, it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong, but you know, you just gotta, you gotta stay in the game. Too many people get scared out, right? And, and that's unfortunate. And that's what the whales want. They want to manipulate people to thinking that it's always gonna be bad, nothing ever comes back, and then they want to steal your wealth from you. And that's what you don't want. They're already rich enough. You don't want to transfer your wealth to anyone else. You want to keep it for yourself. Would be interesting to hear you talk about XRP in a, larger, in a less sarcastic way. I've already said it. I said my piece about XRP. There's, n there's nothing else you can say. All the negatives are still there. No negatives for XRP has, has been removed. <laughs> so I don't know what else to say. There's too, many, there's too many negatives when it comes to XRP that, that most of the XRP army just don't realize. I don't want to. I don't want to come down. I don't want to uh, be a Debbie Downer right now on XRP. Today's an exciting day, so let's let's keep it focused and positive on the good projects, okay? Outside of XRP. How do you stake UST Jewel? Uh, you go. I do it inside of DeFi Kingdom. DeFi Kingdoms have their own decks, so you just need a Harmony Wallet, and you can program your MetaMask to 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 do that. So there's a lot of instructions out there. Just look into how to add Harmony to MetaMask. Then you could transfer. You could transfer Jewel to it, and then within the decks, you can you can trade for UST, and then you could stake it. In the farm.
Do I own a cat? No. No, I'm a, I'm a dog person. Not a cat person. Although I, I, I don't mind owning a cat. It's just I don't want to deal with the litter box. Tran-Q? I don't know. I, I've never heard of that, JD. Some regulation might be beneficial. I, I, I do think some regulation would be beneficial. I, I'll give you a really good one, and I don't think anyone could disagree with this. Uh, let's just take a look at Tether, right? At $80 billion, or $81 billion. Do they have $81 billion in the bank? No one knows. According to their third-party audits, they do. But do they really? No one knows, right? So one regulation that could be good is to force stablecoin makers like Tether, who claim they have this amount in cash, right, to back, to, it's one-to-one -one backed to USTD, um, to make sure that they actually have enough cash so that there's no fears of them just collapsing and rug pulling and destroying the entire crypto space, right? That's a good regulation to have. So I would not mind that. Um, so, you know, that's a clear example. I think there's a lot of maxis out there that say, oh, you know, you don't want any regulation. Should it be a free open market? And if things crash, just let it crash and this and that. Well, it's going to destroy so much people and set things back for so long. You don't want that. So in this case, yes. But there's other regulations, of course, a lot of KYC requirements, a lot of IRS reporting, stuff like that. Of course, no one wants and it'll just hinder progress if you add them, but you know some would not be bad. Eros, Eros, thank you, Jerry. If you're talking about Anchor for staking, I think it's just a so-so project. It's a project that allows you to create nodes for other projects, but you have to pay for it, and it's a project that allows you to do some liquid staking, which is okay, but not very appealing to me. Do you have any hope for Doge? Dodge or jo Doge? I think you're meaning Doge, right? Well, Doge is up today. What are you talking about? It's up. Now, if you're asking, let's go get back to 73 cents. That's, that's going to be very hard. Even if Bitcoin gets back to 69,000, I don't think Doge would be back to 74 cents, to be honest. Because I think a lot of momentum, first of all, shifted to SHIB. And a lot of money also shifted from both of these into NFTs. So I think it's going to take a while before they get back to the all-time high, unless something drastic happened. Like Elon buys a billion dollars with their Doge on Twitter or something like that. Would you suggest I get it more into IT or software development? It depends. You know, not everyone could be a programmer. I went... I started as a programmer in college, and then I realized it was not meant for me. Some people just get it really easily. It just clicks. It depends on how you think. So I went the hardware route, and I don't regret it. I like hardware. I like servers and networking and stuff like that. So it just depends. If you want to be a blockchain developer, that's a different type of programming. But, yeah, you can start learning Solidity, JavaScript, you know, stuff like that. It just really depends on... Your, I guess you. Uh, Night Swap Finance. I'm sorry, not a, never heard of it. Load up your, uh, Stan says, load up your KDA bags before it's too late. Co complete. Hey, Stan, I just covered that news. But I do agree. That's going to help them tremendously going forward. Um, Romania March will be mass retail FOMO, hype outweighing FUD. Right now, I, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Today is a very good day, but FOMO has not really hit yet. You know when it's gonna hit? It's gonna hit when we get back to 50s. Okay, I think so. Like, like I said at the beginning, it's funny, and I know most people uh, came in when Bitcoin was already, you know, above 30 or 40 thousand. Right. So I get why the sentiment is so bad, but like. For any anyone out there that's been for been around crypto for at least two years, I'm not even talking about four years or five years going back to 2017. But if you've been around since the beginning of 2022, then you know that <laughs> that the sentiment should not be the same. March of 2020, 
April, May of 2020, that was bad. Bitcoin was at four, five, six thousand, right? But the sentiment at forty thousand Bitcoin seems the same as four thousand Bitcoin, and that shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be close. But unfortunately, that's the way things are, right? But I think right now we're not true FOMO, obviously, because we're not back up to sixty nine thousand. But we do need to break above this forty four five which I think we have a really good shot of doing. Then we could get back to the 50s, and then I think that FOMO will start building back again. And once FOMO builds back, you know, of course, things will get wild. But today's stream, the main topic of today's stream is just look at Goldman Sachs. This is on their front page, guys. This is smack middle of their front page talking about crypto, blockchain, metaverses, Web 3.0, Bitcoin, wallets, Right? It seems like they have turned into a, a crypto company. It seems like they're no longer an investment bank. Right? This is how far we have come. Bitcoin, crypto is mainstream. There's no denying it is mainstream. But adoption is still very small. I think the statistic is less than 5% of Americans own crypto. Think about it. Less than 5%? Wait until it's 75% or wait until it's 100%. Right? That's when things will really be crazy. So we are still so early. Very, very early. Um, do you think VeChain is a good project? Yes, I do. Where are some breakout levels you're watching? Well, I just mentioned it. 44.5 will be a very big one. We haven't been able to break it since January, early January, right? We tried one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, right? So this is the next spot to look at. I've been saying we're probably going to head right there today, and we are. And then we'll see if we can utilize it as a support. We'll probably break through and then come back down. But it, the important thing is we use this as a support. And then it'll be good. Then the next support level will be probably be around here. Um, yeah, between 46 and 48 will probably be the next one. Uh, I gave up on Mar Marlin. I don't think there, anyone's using him anymore. AdShares is pumping hard, but this is a project of the future outside the metaverse. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with them, but they're about advertising. They, I think they've been around for a while. Like advertising within games, you know. Um, I mean, they could potentially do well. If they hook up with all the metaverse players, all the games, and start showing ads and... You know, players can earn it too. It's, I mean, it could work out, but it's just so early to make that call. Uh, health sector. As soon as you say health sector, I say no. People don't realize how hard it is to break into the healthcare sector. So many regulations. So many regulations. Especially around patient data and stuff like that. So when it comes to... Healthcare, I'm just going to stay away from it. Do you think Harmony will reach $1 by end of year? Well, it depends on where we are by end of the year, but, you know, that's roughly 7x. Yeah, that could happen. That could certainly happen. That's for sure. Thoughts on she being listed on Robinhood? I don't know what's taking so long. I thought this should have happened already. I don't know why it's taking so long for Robinhood to do that. What are key points? What are key points you want in a crypto exchange? Well, just first and foremost, you gotta you gotta trust them. They're a big player, right? Which is why I partnered up with FTX. FTX, you know, been around for a while. Sam Bankman Fried is a terrific young leader. Doing a lot of great things. They have a good exchange. FTX also has really good apps. They bought um, Blockfolio, right? So you got to use some reputable names. Make sure that they're not going to disappear. They're not going to get rug pulled, right? They have adequate custodian service, insurance, stuff like that, right? So, yeah.
Martin, I already said Pond, Marlin. I'm no longer a fan. Um, there's a lot of talk about Stargate Finance. It's just uh, it's a cross bridge. It's a cross bridge decks slash liquidity pools. But you know they're getting listed. I believe in a few places. I need to do more research on Stargate Finance. I love Stargate the movie and the series. More so the series. Stargate SG-1, in my opinion, is the best series. Best sci-fi, like, space exploration series. Um, but as for, the, as for the crypto, I have to do more research into them. I like, I like CRO, yes. Uh, ApeCoin is a DAO, so it's utility and voting power of the company, yes. Yes, I do agree with that, and I do like them too. I mentioned them. I mean, yesterday, you know, I did a whole video about how to build a portfolio, name some of the top coins I would put in a portfolio if I was to build one today. I give a lot of good information. So a lot of newcomers today watching ask me all these questions. You need to just watch my last night's video. It will explain a lot of stuff for you guys. A lot of stuff. Um, What else? For Stargate... Stargate SG-1 was great. Stargate Atlantis was okay. And then the Stargate Universe where it got so-so. Not as good. I wish they would bring it back. All right. Um, 5,000 people. Smash the like, guys. It's a good day. It's a good day. But it's looking like it's about to get better. If we can get to this 44.5 mark and smash through it, man... That's going to be terrific. And we are right at the cusp of $2 trillion market cap. In fact, we probably are already above $2 trillion. Um, I know CoinGecko already says $2 trillion. And, and today's just a really good recovery day overall. But, you know, here's the thing about today. Even though today is a good recovery day, most altcoins are still down. If you look at the last 90 days, year to date, they're still down, which means... Still good opportunities. It's not like we fully recovered, right? And that the best way to look at that is we still have time. We still have time to DCA, still have time to to dollar cost average and to buy our favorite crypto, right? So that is the good thing. Don't wait until you get confirmation that we're above to new all-time highs. That's not when you want to buy. You want to buy when things are low. Right, so keep that in mind. <laughs> buy when things are low, not buy when things are high, because that's generally what people do. They keep waiting and waiting and waiting until things make a new high, and then they ask me, George, should I get into it? No, I've been telling you guys, buy the dips, hold all, have patience, and you'll get rewarded. And today's one of those good days, good days, good reminders of what what is to come. Uh, all right, last few questions. Raul Paul still calling for 15k ETH by this summer. I think that's too aggressive. No, it's not gonna go 5x by by three months. Can it be 15k by the end of the year? Possible. Yes. Cosmos very underrated. Uh, decentralized and clinical trials. Yeah, forget that. There's no. <laughs> There's a lot of big companies that make a lot of money with clinical trials. So decentralized clinical trials is not going to help any of these companies make more money, so probably not. Um, you should start a Clubhouse. I thought no one talks about, no one uses Clubhouse anymore. I think everyone is using Twitter spaces. Yeah, I may do that, I may not, I don't know. I was thinking about that. All right guys, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Go make sure you grab I Am George NFT before it's all out. There's only a week left, so make sure you check it out. And I will see you guys tonight. All right? Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.